Ozell Williams is no longer the cheerleading coach at East High School. He was fired today less than 48 hours after we broke this story and showed you videos of cheerleaders being forced into splits. Here's how we got here. On June 15th, a cheer mom emailed a video to the East High School athletic director after the parents met with the athletic director and principal. The coach remained on Tuesday after nine wants to know was tipped off to these videos. We asked the district for more information. That's how the superintendent found out about this. On Wednesday, DPS began an internal investigation. Also Wednesday, the Department of Human Services received a tip which initiated a Denver police investigation. After that, five employees, including the coach, principal and athletic director, were put on leave. And today, the coach was fired. A timeline laid out by Superintendent Tom Bosberg, who answered questions from our reporter who broke this story, Marshall Zellinger. We now know DPS Superintendent Tom Bosberg found out about these East High School cheerleader videos after Nine Wants to Know emailed the district asking for information on Tuesday. When we broke the news earlier this week, we let you know East High School administrators knew about this specific video when this cheerleader's mom emailed it to them in June. At that time, the decision should have been made to terminate the employment of Coach Williams and I believe to report what was observed on the video to the police. East High's principal and athletic director, who met with the family in June to discuss the video, remain on leave. And did a Denver Public Schools employee break the law by not forwarding that video to police when they saw it in June? Yeah, so that is a question that the police is looking at, and that is a question that the independent investigation is also looking at. Bosberg also addressed the vetting process Williams went through to be hired as coach. As we first reported Thursday, Williams was let go from his consulting job with Boulder High School cheerleading last year because of the same forced splits technique. He did not, to my knowledge, submit any information of ever having worked for the Boulder Valley School District, nor to my knowledge was he ever an employee of the Boulder Valley uh, school districts. I confirm with Boulder Valley Schools again today that Williams was a consultant who worked on choreography and tumbling with Boulder High cheerleaders. I also found out why a district lawyer is among the five employees on leave. The superintendent told me someone from the district knew something back in June. Marshall Zellinger, 9 News. Marshall, thank you. And today the superintendent had a message for parents saying it's important they know their children are safe at school. Nine News reporter Anusha Roy joins us now. And Anusha, the superintendent had a personal reaction tonight. Christine, that included a conversation with his own two high school age daughters, shocked by what they saw in this video. He says that it has deeply affected him as well. But the superintendent wants parents to still trust that their children are safe at schools. And that's one of the reasons this is so shocking is because of the school district's safety records. Here Here's what he said about his own conversation within his own family. Talked about it and, and we talked about how important it is that if they ever get in a situation like that, that they feel empowered to say no, that they never be in a situation where they feel that their own safety uh, is at risk. Today, the district said counselors are working with the cheerleading team as well as the students who used to be on the team. The district is aware of at least one student saying she's now being cyber bullied after coming forward. The district vowing to address these concerns right away, encouraging anyone who is being bullied to tell them. And Christine, we did reach out to Ozell Williams, the former coach who said that he wants to share his side of his story, but then asked us to get in contact with his lawyer. Our sister station, KHOU, is a station so many people in Houston depend on. Now, if you haven't heard this story, KHOU had to evacuate. It's been flooded out. They have no link to their transmitter. They have no way to produce news. So for the last several hours, a group of journalists right here in Denver have been helping to make sure the people of Houston get the information they need. Our Steve Steger explains from our control room. When water overpowered the doors at KHOU, a major voice in a community in crisis went silent, but only for a few hours. The floodwaters of Harvey rendered the Houston Tegna TV station unusable. No control room means no television. There really is no TV station for them to work out of. We don't need Nine News Director of well, Technology you know, and Operations we're, we're Scott we're Gill to tell you what open. havoc water can wreak on TV equipment. It's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. Kind of an interesting situation at these two shelters. We'd rather have him explain the feat of engineering it takes to use a TV station in Denver to get KHOU back on TV screens in Houston. They are using our control room, our graphics, our video playback equipment, basically everything here to make a TV show. 
and then it's being sent back via satellite to their transmitter. Here's how it's working. KHOU is temporarily set up at a PBS station in Houston with no links to their transmitter. So they are beaming a satellite signal back to KUSA. Reporters on the ground are doing the same thing, either by satellite or by internet. We're taking those signals, mixing them together with graphics, and sending them back to KHOU's transmitter in Houston so the signal is available citywide. This is a uh, small control room uh, over a thousand miles away. That was a great shot, thank so, you. Our technology Hi, this is has Megan. the backs of hardworking journalists, a team telling the toughest story in its city's history. These types of moments are the times when everyone steps up. Hang on. For Next, I'm Steve Steger. Next question comes from a viewer named Stacy Scattergood. Hey Next, my friend in Texas and I would like to know how much snow Colorado would be getting in place of Texas's 50 inches of rain. So that's going to require some math, Stacy, and possibly a meteorology degree. So it's good we have some people who know all about this stuff. We asked meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen to answer this for you. Well, that would be one epic snowstorm. We usually get 10 to 30 times more snow from a storm than we get rain. And Colorado is pretty far from an ocean, so water vapor doesn't get transported here in large doses. But for fun, let's say we did get a storm with 50 inches of water available. If the snow to water ratio in Denver was 15 to 1, then we would get a 750 inch snowstorm or 62 and a half feet. The air in the mountains is even colder. We can get ratios near 30 to 1, which would be a 1500 inch snowstorm or 125 feet. The biggest snowstorm we've ever had was 86 inches in Georgetown back in 1913. Loveland Ski Area gets some of the most snow in the state, and they average about 422 inches for a whole season. Corey really knows his stuff. Another way to put this into perspective, take Niagara Falls. 750,000 gallons of water poured over the falls there, or pour over the falls there every single second. Corey estimates that about 7 trillion gallons fell in the Houston area so far, so it would take 107 days for all of that water to flow over Niagara Falls. That's amazing. An Amber Alert for a one year old boy and his mother has been canceled. They have been found safe in Denver. Zaid Adams and Samantha Adams were found at the light rail station at Evans and Santa Fe. Police are still looking for the man accused of kidnapping them. That being 23 year old Mauricio Venzor Gonzalez. Nine News reporter Jordan Chavez is at Denver Health this afternoon in Jordan. That is where the mother and child are currently being treated. Exactly, Christine. We know that because we saw footage from our Sky 9 helicopter that showed the ambulance bringing them here. Now, according to Colorado Bureau of Investigation, to reiterate what you said, they were found at that light rail at or near the light rail at Santa Fe and Evans. And actually, according to Pueblo Police, they found all three of them, including Adam's ex-boyfriend, Mariko Vensor Gonzalez. However, they say he took off and again hasn't been found just yet. Like, though they are safe, even though we are standing outside the hospital. We're told that they have been found. They're safe. That Amber Alert has been canceled. And we were actually at the scene earlier, but the only officers that were there were from the Denver Police Department or were with RTD. And because Adams County Sheriff's Office is leading the investigation, they couldn't tell us anything. So we're hoping to get those answers here pretty soon at a news conference in Commerce City. It's being conducted by the Adams County Sheriff's Office. So any of the gaps that we don't have right now, it's actually, I think, we're to be told it's going on right now. We have Nine News reporter Anusha Roy and Nine News photojournalist Brian Wendland, they are there for us right now, so hopefully we'll be able to update you with some of those answers a little bit later, Christine. Yeah, we certainly know a lot of eyes and ears were looking out for that mom and little one, so we're glad to hear that they were found safely, and we'll be looking forward to those updates. Jordan Chavez reporting. Jordan, thank you. What looks to be an ordinary construction site has become quite extraordinary, not because the building that's going on, that has all come to a halt, but instead, researchers are at this spot in Thornton digging up the bones of a triceratops. The skull was discovered almost a week ago. They are calling it the most complete set of dinosaur bones ever found along the Front Range. Here's more from 9 News reporter Dan Grossman. Uh, we've got a lot more ground to cover. The street side view of the dig site left a lot to be desired. There's like 10 people over there right now, the dig area. Even from Richard Shine's perch of a porch. Not spying on my neighbors. The only thing that could be seen was a sea of white hard hats. Uh, my deck has turned into a dinosaur party. 
I thought, I'm going to start digging up my yard. <laughs> but once you started speaking to the people in those hats. Um, by the end of the day yesterday, we had the second horns. They have two horns above their eyes. The true magnitude of what they were digging up became clear. So this is probably one of the most complete, if not the most complete, Cretaceous dinosaur from the Denver metro area, from the Front Range. The plaster on Joe Sertich's fingernails told the story of just how far researchers have come. Tuesday, they found a shoulder blade and a skull fragment. Uh, this is a diagram that I've been updating every day. As of Thursday, they have found everything that is highlighted. They even started moving some of the bones, like this casted rib, back to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science for further analysis. This discovery really is a window into not only what Thornton was like, but what the Front Range was like 66 and a half million years ago. Sertich says he and his team will stay here through the weekend. We're starting to get these first bones out of the site, so it's really exciting for us. I'm waiting for him to find a T-Rex, you know. <laughs> you can bet curious onlookers will as well. So, you know, this is exciting to have this right across the street.